Hello, and welcome to another digital imaging tutorial. Today's tutorial is titled Halftone. What the heck is a halftone? Let's get started. There are many end products that may incorporate an image that was manipulated using Photoshop. If your end product is a printed publication that will be produced on an offset printing press, then halftones are used to recreate continuous tone images such as photographs. Examples of printed products that use halftones to reproduce an image include magazines and newspapers. A halftone is made up of various sized dots of ink that are typically elliptical in shape. These dots conform to a grid and larger dots are closer together, therefore producing darker areas of the image. Smaller dots have more space between them, allowing more paper to show through, therefore producing lighter areas. If these dots are small enough, the human eye does not see them, allowing for what looks like smooth levels of gray or color. To reproduce a black and white photograph, only black ink is used. To reproduce a colored image, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black inks are typically used. The same concept applies, however we are now using translucent inks and when they are combined on paper, our eyes blend the colors together. The resolution of a halftone line screen is referred to as lines per inch or LPI. Newspapers commonly print using 100 LPI and magazines commonly use 150 LPI. An image printed using 150 LPI has more halftone dots per inch, therefore they are smaller and the final product appears smoother. A close-up look at the newspaper example reveals the halftone dots of ink used to reproduce this continuous tone image at 100 LPI. Because of the poor quality of newsprint, you will notice that the halftone dots are not very crisp or sharp. One reason that newspapers do not print with a higher resolution halftone line screen is because of the poor quality of paper. The smaller halftone dot would not hold up on this type of paper. The image from the magazine appears smoother because it uses a higher resolution halftone line screen, 150 LPI. A close-up look of this image shows the relationship between the cyan, magenta, yellow, and black halftone dots of ink. The actual dots are much crisper in this example because they were printed on a higher quality coated paper. We can also compare the original digital photograph. This digital image is actually made up of pixels. The resolution of a Photoshop image is correctly referred to as PPI or pixels per inch compared to the final product which is made up of halftone dots that are correctly referred to as LPI or lines per inch. To figure the correct resolution for a Photoshop image the following formula is used. PPI equals 2 times LPI. PPI stands for pixels per inch and refers to the resolution of your Photoshop document. LPI stands for lines per inch and refers to the resolution of the halftone line screen used to reproduce your image in the final product. Finally, let's look at a simulation of the four color printing process and see how each halftone dot of color interacts with the others to reproduce a color photograph. First cyan is printed, next magenta, then yellow, and finally black. You can see that when we combine these, the colors blend together and produce a color photograph. If we were to use a higher resolution halftone, the dots would be smaller and the finished product would appear smoother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.